Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So the time that I'm filming this is July 11th. It's July 11th right now. And this video is going to be about our beloved Cory Monteef and about his life and why it was cut so short. And I know lots of you already know about what happened to Cory Monteith since it's coming up on nine years since he passed away, which is honestly pretty crazy to think about. So probably a lot of you guys watching, if any of you guys are watching, I bet a lot of you are probably way too young to even like know Cory when he was really popular. And I'm not gonna split hairs, I'm not gonna lie, according, like, also myself, I am one of those people because I am only 20 years old, so I was pretty young when the whole, when Corey was really big and when Glee was a really big show. I was too young to watch it, I didn't watch it until the show was over, so I couldn't really experience it at the time. But it's one of those things where I heard about it when it happened. Like, my mom didn't watch Glee, but she knew about Cory Monteith and she heard about him on the news when he passed away. And even people in my school, even people who didn't even know who Cory was, they heard about an actor passing away from a drug overdose. And this was also told in a lot of people to kind of give their kids the don't do drugs lecture. And I definitely got that from my parents. They were definitely telling me, see what happens when you do drugs, everything, like your life is cut short, do not do drugs. And the thing about Corey's story, honestly, which is what makes it super de more depressing than it already is because there's already a person dying, which is already sad enough, but what makes it even sadder is looking through his life and seeing how close he was to recovery because I know when you're an addict whether it's to alcohol or to drugs I know that you're never really recovered you're always fighting to stay recovered in a sense you're fighting daily not to give in to temptations because once you know what drugs feels like it's going to be hard not to do them when you're having a bad day the same goes for alcohol which Corey struggled with both he struggled with alcohol and he struggled with drugs. And looking at his story, especially all the research I did for this video, it almost seems like the end of a very, very sad story because he had so much support, he had so much people in his life, he had so much love, as cheesy as that is, he had a lot of people in his life and he wanted to live. He wanted to live for, even if it's not just for himself, for everyone, he wanted to get better. But sometimes alcohol is just too much, addiction is just too strong sometimes. Another thing when I did research for this video, Leah Michelle actually stated that Corey has always been kind of a, a closed person. He didn't really talk about his life that much he didn't whether that's to her or to the public he really did not talk about it that much so unfortunately i couldn't get as much information as i would have liked for this video because i like to go really in depth and i like to have reasons for things but unfortunately he didn't really give out that much which i respect but for the case of this video i couldn't give as much information as i would like we know a good majority of his early life but we don't know that much about his addiction because he kind of kept that a little bit private. Lee Michelle actually stated that she didn't even know how bad his addiction was until after he passed away, which is honestly crazy to think about. Like, he wasn't even that open about it with his girlfriend or with his... The only people who really knew about it was his family, to be honest, which again, I'm not judging, but for the sake of this video, I couldn't go in as depth as I would like. So with no further ado, let's talk about our beloved Cory Monteith. So Cory Allen Monteith was born on March 11th, 1982, in Alberto, Canada. He was the younger son to, Al to Anne McGregor, 
who was an Ontario designer, and to Joe Monteef, and who served at the Canadian War. He had an older brother named Sean. So Corey's parents divorced when he was only seven years old, and him and his older brother was basically raised by his mother in Canada. After the divorce, he saw very little of his father since he was in the service. And if that sounds familiar, it is, because, because this part of Corey's life was written into Glee as the character Finn. I won't do it. I'm not moving. I'm not ready. And he wouldn't want you to do this if I wasn't ready. You didn't know him, Finn! And Corey also said that he had pretty bad social difficulties when it came to school. From the mere age of 13 is when he started using drugs and alcohol for the first time. He also started playing hooky from school a lot. He unfortunately got into the wrong set of people. The people who were into that kind of stuff and who were much older than him. He mentioned that he started doing drugs mainly just to fit in, even if it wasn't for the right people. But he was also said to be a pretty bright kid, but he never felt like he belonged. So he turned to drugs and alcohol at only the age of 13, and he went to rehab for the first time when he was 16, but nothing really lasted long term. He attended 16 different attending schools, including different programs for troubled teens. But Corey dropped out altogether at the age of 16. By this time, the drug and alcohol dependency definitely increased. And Corey turned to a lot of petty crimes, such as stealing money from his friends and family so he could curb his addiction. His mother and friends staged an intervention for him at the age of 19. And he began attending rehab rehabilitation. Corey stated, I'm lucky on so many accounts. I'm so lucky to be alive. He eventually received his high school diploma in 2011 after doing some online programs. Before breaking into show business, Corey worked a bunch of tiny variant jobs, which included being a Walmart greeter, a taxi cab driver, mechanic, and a school bus driver. He was also a roofer, and he was also a drummer for a few bands. Corey started his acting in 2004. He had minor roles in Final Destination 3, Whisperer, and Deck the Hall. He had a recurring role in Kyle XY, and he also made a few guest appearances in, a cer in some certain shows, like Smallville, Supernatural, Flash Gordon, Stargate Atlantis, and Stargate CG1. In 2005, he appeared in Color Bash. The following year, he made an appearance in the movie Bloody Mary. His agent suggested that Corey should take some acting classes, so he started to attend acting classes in 2007. In April 2010, Corey was casted in the movie Monte Carlo with, a, with his guest star Selena Gomez. How you doing? I'm Corey Monteith. I'm here at Raleigh Studios in Budapest, Hungary on the set of Monte Carlo. And I'm gonna go inside and check it out because we are making some movie magic. Which this was his first movie in a while after being casted in Glee. On August 8th, 2010, he co-hosted the Teen Choice Awards. I was like, I thought, I thought they were taking me backstage to, uh, to, to pr promote the movie, which we did, but then I won a Teen Choice Award, so that's... Corey also hosted the Gemini Awards in Toronto, November 13th, 2010. Any butterflies about tonight? A little bit. A little bit? But I think uh, just a healthy amount of butterflies. Okay, that's good. In January 2011, Corey was in this film, Sisters and Brothers. It premiered in Toronto International Film Festival on September 11th. He also starred in the movie For All the Wrong Reasons, which included Corey starring as a manager of a Walmart kind of thing, and his wife suffered with post-traumatic stress disorder. His agent was really excited that Corey was starting to be in more in-depth, dramatic, deep stuff. He filmed his parts on the weekdays, flying to Los Angeles in 2011 to promote the new season of Glee. That same year, Corey also filmed a PSA for Straight But Not Narrow, an online PSA organization aimed at changing the minds of young straight teens and their attitudes and viewpoints of the LGBTQ plus community. In 2010, he also hosted the GLAAD Awards in New York City with co-star Naya Rivera. So here tonight, we're here to celebrate, but we're also here to fire people up. 
to show everyone in this room that you can take the action to help the LGBT community. So Corey began acting with Lee Michelle in 2008 when they were of course casted to be love interest in Glee. In early 2012, the media then began reporting that they had begun dating. Because people think that y'all are a couple. We are. You are a couple. Yeah. Okay. Well then... They remained together until his death. In December 2013, a few months after Corey's death, Leah did state that he was a pretty private person. Leah also released numerous songs about Corey. These songs include If You Say So, which she began writing a week after his death. It was in reference to the last thing that he ever said to her. Hey you, which is a follow-up to If You Say So, which was released in April 2017. He was also rumored to have dated Taylor Swift, and it was also rumored that Taylor's song, Mine, and her song from her new album called Bigger Than The Whole Sky is about Cory Monteith. So as we all know, in 2009, Corey was casted to play the role of Finn Hudson, a quarterback of the football team for the fictional high school McKinley High, on the show Glee. Corey's agent submitted a video of Corey playing the drums on a whole bunch of Tupperware with chopstick in his kitchen. Ryan Murphy took notice of the video, but did say that he had to be singing and acting in the video for him to even consider saying yes, especially because he didn't have any theatrical experiences. So Corey submitted a second take, where he sung Can't Fight This Feeling, which, of course, you guys are right, which was technically Finn Hudson's submission tape when he auditioned for the Glee Club. And I can't fight this feeling anymore. He then attended a mass audition in Los Angeles. His vocal skills were considered weak, but he later performed very well with the casting directors. Corey also let them know right away that he is not a good dancer. He could sing, he can act, and he could play the drums, but he's not a strong dancer. But they liked him so much they decided to keep him despite his inability to dance. But as you guys remember, they put that into Finn's character traits in the show. See you guys, someone who's not afraid to point out something they're really bad at. But I'm getting better, right? So as we all know, Finn plays the jock, the quarterback of the football team, who has to kind of decide whether he wants to play football or be part of the glee club. And it's a big back and forth battle, including a lot of love triangles. Corey felt that Finn had to grow up a little bit during his time on the show. He said, Finn started off as a stereotypical dumb jock, but as the show has gone on, Finn's not dumb anymore really. He's just a little bit naive. Early reviews of Finn's character were kind of altered in the beginning episodes of Glee. Some critics say that the character Finn and the character Rachel were both agreeable and a little bit desperate, mainly in the pilot episode. Commenting on the fifth episode of the first season, Eric Goldman of IGN stated, We got to see a bit of a darker side to Finn. It's good to see this. Until now, Finn's been a little bit too straight-laced to be totally invested in. In the second season, episode 8, called Furt, Tim Stack of Entertainment Weekly said, Been a while since we've gotten some Finn focus, and I think I honestly just miss Corey Monteith. But I also forgot what a good natural actor he can be. Corey as Finn won the 2011 
Teen Choice Awards. TV Actor in a Comedy. The same category that he's been nominated in the previous year. Although he wasn't a singer before he was in Glee, Corey definitely sung a lot in the show, being one of the number one singers in the entire show. So in May 2010, the cast of Glee went on a two-week-long live tour, mainly in Los Angeles, Phoenix, Chicago, and New York City. The cast performed a lot of hits from the show and also a lot of skits in between the songs. The following May, the cast went on a second tour with mostly new songs and a lot of new skits, performing for four weeks in the USA and in Canada, and even 11 days in England and Ireland. On July 20th, 2013, Ryan Murphy stated that season 5 of Glee will be postponed because of Corey's death. And he did state that the third episode of season 5 will be a tribute episode to Finn's character. Corey's last two films, All the Wrong Reasons and Mechanic, premiered later at the 2013 Canadian Film Festival as a tribute. Hi, this is me in the future. Jump scare, I know. I just wanted to say because I completely forgot to mention this in the video, which I'm kind of annoyed about, so that is why I'm here. So I did not want to watch the new documentary that came out. I made a video about it when it first like was announced that it was happening, which was The Price of Glee. I did not want to watch it because I knew that it was pretty much just a cash grab. They were just cashing in on the cast members' deaths. And also because pretty much all of the remaining cast members didn't want it to be a thing and they didn't know it was a thing. And I am not a Leah Michelle supporter, but they apparently also made Leah out to be a narcissist in like just being really biased towards her. People who didn't really know her that much, which I did not think is the best thing. Especially because Corey very much loved her and they were kind of talking for Corey, which I didn't really like. But again, I didn't really watch the I didn't really watch it because I didn't want to give him that promo. But I also wanted to add this in the the Glee Years section that I did, mainly because Corey's roommate talked a lot in the Price of Glee from alternate interviews that I've seen. He talked in it and he did mention a few things. He mentioned how Corey was how the reason it's called the price of glee is because it's not even the price of the show it's just the price of of being famous and corey according to corey's roommate i forgot his name his name would be right here guy's name this is the source i'm getting this from but apparently he also said that corey did deal with a lot of stalkers which people do believe is one of the reasons why he kind of got back into drugs after being clean for a while mainly because of the stress being famous. Apparently, Corey also says that he doesn't wish fame on his worst enemy, which is kind of surprising to hear him say. He got a stalker in his house who found out his address, so he got a bunch of security cameras and installed them. Him, he installed it himself and said that this is serious, and he was really freaking out about it. He did not like being famous, but again, this is more of the price of fame rather than the price of glee, which again, I feel like they just talked about it because they feel like they just needed something to talk about and needed some money. So I just wanted to add that in. I'm sorry that this is really shaky, bad quality. I just thought it was kind of an interesting point to make, especially because, again, this is coming from Corey's roommate who was in this documentary. So enjoy the rest of the video. Bye. Like I said before, Corey wasn't really that open when it came to his sub substance abuse problems, which I do understand. So I wouldn't. So I'm not able to give as much information as I would like of the whole situation. But we do know that he did start seriously getting addicted by the age of 13. On March 31st, 2013, Corey's publicist announced that he has entered himself in another rehabilitation clinic for, of course, substance abuse. He has previously received substance abuse help when he was 19, like I mentioned. According to Ryan Murphy, he was aware that Corey was using again, so he staged another intervention. 
which I don't know how accurate this part is, but they did say that lots of the creators and lots of the cast members were a part of this interve intervention to kind of push him to get help. But Corey actually agreed to this. And he was written out of the two final episodes of season four. But he also wanted to be sure that he would still have a job by the end of the season. On April 26, 2013, it has been reported that Corey has completed his treatment. At the time of his death, Monty was living in Los Angeles, the same place where Glee was being filmed at the time. On July 13, 2013, Corey was found dead in his hotel in Canada. He was only 31 years old. Corey was scheduled to check out that day, following a seven-night stay, but he failed to do so. Hotel staff went into his room later that day, and they found his body. The Vancouver Police Department stated that his death wasn't apparent at first. An autopsy was completed by the British Columbian Police Department on July 15th. The autopsy came out, and it said that he died from a mixture of alcohol and drugs mainly consisting of heroin and alcohol, and that his death has appeared to be accidental. The final report has been confirmed later that week. It was also stated that Corey also had a mixture of cocaine in his system, along with morphine. He was also found with drug paraphernalia that was also found with a spoon with drug residue on it, and a used hypodermic, as well as two empty bottles of champagne. He stayed in rehab only months before his death, and his attempt to stay off of drugs resulted in lower tolerance of drugs. Corey's body was cremated in Vancouver on July 17th, following a private viewing only for family and close friends. But the only person that we know for sure did go, mainly because she was invited, was Lee Michelle. On July 25th, Lee Michelle and Ryan Murphy had a celebration of life in Los Angeles for him, attended by the cast, crew, and creators, as well as colleagues from other networks and studios. Because of all this happening, they decided to postpone the fifth season of Glee and even considered canceling the whole show at that point. But, it, but the fifth season only ended up premiering a week later than initially planned. The season's third episode, called The Quarterback, aired October 10th, 2013 and as we know, served as a tribute to Cory Monteith. Focusing on his death and the death of Finn Hudson, even though that his death was never mentioned in the show. The show then took a brief hiatus, which lasted until November 7, 2013 due to the extra time they needed to decide what they were going to do with the show at that point. After the quarterback, the creators decided to continue continuing to mention Finn in the show. He stated, We don't just say this is done, and we're never going to go back to it. So that resonates throughout the year. So at the 65th Pr Primetime Emmy Awards, held on September 13th, 2013, it featured an extended tribute to Cory Monteith, held by her co-star, Jane Lynch. Tonight we remember Cory for all he was and mourn the loss of all he could have been. To a generation that loved Cory so, please know, this gifted and wonderful young man was worthy of your love. And if you were lucky enough to know Cory as we did and witness firsthand Cory's goofy, breezy sense of humor, his natural instinct for inclusiveness, and his unbridled sense of generosity, day in and day out. I promise, you'd have loved him even more. He was also featured in a memorial at the Grammys the same year. Shortly after his death, Lee fans raised money to name a star foundation after being inspired by a scene of Finn Hudson in the show. If you guys don't know a scene I'm talking about, here you go. Because there's already a star named Rachel Berry. She's right here on Earth, and she's brighter than any of those stars up there. So I just wanted to make sure that whenever she feels lonely, she can look up in the sky, and no matter where I am, she can know that I'm looking down on her. So people raised money. 
so they could get a star named after Corey. On July 8th, 2020, Naya Rivera, Corey Monteith's co-star, and her body was recovered on the 7th anniversary of his death, which Kevin McHale tweeted this. I'm not religious by any means, but you'd be hard pressed to convince me that Cora didn't help us find our girl today. These two, in many ways, were the male and female versions of one another. So nice, cared deeply, were stupidly talented, and most fun, and really, really good people. Now here's a few other people who cared so deeply about Corey and what they had to say about it on Twitter. Hashtag rest in peace Corey Monteith. So unbelievably tragic. Please hashtag pray for Leah, says Demi Lovato. Corey Monteith, may your spirit be at peace and may you fly with the angels. Heartbreaking. My prayers are with, the, with all of his loved ones, says Rihanna. Speechless and for the worst reason, says Taylor Swift. First day on Glee, he said to me, I can't believe I'm working with Uncle Jesse. I can't believe I'm writing this tweet. Heartbreaking. Rest in peace, Corey, says John Stamos. How sad to read about Corey Monteith passing away. What a shame. He was a lovely, kind, talented, and will be missed, says Neil Patrick Harris. Addiction is a powerful disease that is sly and crafty. It's so sad when it claims another. Don't be ashamed to ask for help if you need it, says Christian Bell. This hurts. I love you, Corey. Rest in peace. My thoughts and prayers are with you and your family, says Selena Gomez. We hold you in our hearts today, and every day we remember your smile. We will love you and miss you always, said Liam Michelle. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm sorry that's pretty depressing. I hope you guys learned a thing or two about our beloved Corey and how even though addiction, I can't personally say this from experience because I don't have an addiction to drugs and I never did, but that, that just goes to show that it doesn't make him a bad person. Corey is still the sweet, same amazing person that we all thought he was. And his legacy still goes on because every single year I still see posts about him. It's never been forgotten and hopefully it never will be forgotten. I'm also going to be doing a video about Naya pretty soon and her video I predict will be much longer because she has a lot of information about her entire life on the internet. She has an entire memoir about her life. She is in countless interviews from 2020. like. 2020 and before like so many so i'm gonna be very excited to do that video next well guys i hope you guys enjoy this video and i'll see you in the next one